Well, first of all, it's not even sitting in its own nest and clearly has not climbed here by itself. And secondly, someone else's parents take care of it. Yes, you've probably heard about cuckoo chicks. The cuckoo is the most famous bad mother. She just leaves her children in other people's nests and lets them take care of themselves. But in fact, the animal world is full of other bad parents. Come on, some of them are just terrible. And we're going to talk about them today. Let's start, perhaps, with this video, where a stork throws its baby out of the nest. I highly doubt that the chick survived this fall. And after that, they call the cuckoo a bad mother? She's like parent of the year. Okay, of course, storks do not do this because they hate children and not because of some mental deviations. Moreover, for some animals and birds, such behavior is, well, normal. I can't believe I'm saying this myself, but the intentional killing of offspring is practiced by many species. There's even a special term, reduction of brood. White storks also do it, but it has nothing to do with their parenting qualities. It's just natural natural selection. When parents realize that they just don't have enough resources to feed all their babies, they get rid of one or two. Sometimes they choose the weakest ones, but sometimes everything happens by accident. Nothing personal, just survival instincts. And now take a look at these photos. I warn you, they can shock you. This story happened in Hawange National Park in 2015 and shocked everyone who found out about it. The little hippopotamus was only two days old when its mother introduced it to the rest of the herd. Or rather, she tried to introduce it. Everything turned out to be a disaster. Several adults attacked the little one and killed him, literally ripping him to pieces. The mother tried to protect him, but she didn't succeed. The crocodile ate the baby's remains. I honestly admit it, the whole situation looks like a perfect illustration of the expression cruel wildlife. But as in most cases with the stork, the adult animals had a reason to do so. Most likely, it's all about overpopulation. A standard herd of hippos consists of 10 to 15 individuals. Maybe there was just no room for the baby, but this is just a theory. The reasons why hippopotami commit infanticide remain relatively unknown because of the difficulty in studying these aggressive creatures. These are real killing machines. Hippop Hippopotami tend to attack even people who are too close to their source of water, or they can trample anyone who gets in their way. You know, it's quite difficult to conduct research in such conditions, and even if people did want to save that poor little man, they simply couldn't do it. No one can deal with an angry hippopotamus. However, as I said, such behavior is common for many animals. Even noble lions aren't an exception. When a male in a pride changes, it kills the cubs of his predecessor, and they can still drink their mother's milk. The fact is that the females of most mammals can't mate and and get pregnant while feeding. By killing little lions, the male approaches the moment of conception of his own babies. Again, nothing personal. But this is all just nonsense compared to the behavior of pigs. This is where the real thrash and hardcore begins. Sometimes pigs have aggression attacks and they bite their congeners. For example, because they're sick. Or because it's too tight there. Or, well, in fact, scientists aren't completely sure what the reason for all this is. Too many factors and not enough research. But one thing is violence against adults. And quite another is violence against little pigs. Sometimes the sow eats its babies right after birth. This behavioral disorder may be due to very painful and difficult childbirth or very poor conditions. Sometimes aggression is limited only by bites, but the mother is quite able to bite her newborn babies to death, and she won't be upset at all. According to one version, it can be a violation of the instinct of protection of offspring. That is, it suddenly sees its piglets as dangerous, unwelcome guests. Or maybe she just wants to. An animal that's able to eat its own newly born children should hardly explain the reasons for its behavior. Although people certainly try to prevent the killing of piglets, sedatives after childbirth seem to help. But in many cases, the beginning of maternal aggression is simply postponed. In addition, the desire to harm their offspring is most often hereditary. And to avoid violent behavior, people simply limit reproduction of certain pigs. But as I said, maternal cannibalism has too many reasons. It's impossible to guess which one it will be. Now let's leave the pig hardcore and go back to the cuckoo chick from the very beginning of the video. This is a very interesting model of bird behavior, but it's not unique. The brown-headed cowbird acts in a similar way. These moms like to outsource their parental responsibilities, so they lay eggs in the nests of other birds. And they aren't particularly worried about which family their chick will get into. Well, they don't even care about the species. The cowbirds regularly deceive about 
250 species, putting to them their responsibility to raise their offspring. But most interesting is that this isn't the only way that cowbirds deceive others. Even after the grown-up chicks leave the nest, they continue to deceive, asking for food from other birds that didn't even raise them. Can you believe the nerve? But these are all small birds. Eagles are quite another thing. They can be considered quite caring parents. They feed their offspring with fresh meat, protect them from cold, heat, and predators. They don't even throw anyone out of the nest, as storks do, but not because they're ready to take care of even a few chicks. Their chicks do all the dirty work for them. The oldest chick can act aggressively towards its brothers and sisters, and its attempts to dominate may well lead to the death of another chick. Do you know what parents will do? Nothing. The strongest one survives, and this is only beneficial for them. You know, less problems with food, you can spend the time saved on yourself. But wait, it's not only eagles. I almost forgot about one of the most famous examples of disgusting parenthood. It's, of course, pandas. Pandas are charming, funny, and almost extinct. Or rather, this species is classified as vulnerable. And there are several reasons. But as the main one, I would highlight the disgusting care for their offspring. That is, pandas aren't very eager to reproduce. But when it comes to it, twins are often born, and then a young mother is faced with a choice. Which of the cubs to feed and who to leave to die? Yeah, you got that right. Most often, the chance to survive is given to the first baby. Panda cubs are blind, completely helpless at birth, and their weight is about one nine hundredth of their mother's weight. A panda mother must hold the child firmly to keep its body warm and press it to the chest to feed. So the female has to do everything for her baby, and she can't do these operations with two babies at once. So people have found a solution to the problem, of course. When it comes to the birth of twins in captivity, soon after birth, caretakers take one of the babies, deceiving the mother and making her think that she only has one child. And yes, the panda easily believes it. One baby, two babies, who cares? What time do we eat? The twins are changed up to ten times a day to maintain the illusion of a single panda baby. One of the cubs is almost always with the mother, and the other is kept in an incubator and eats formula. This way, both babies have the opportunity to survive, and their mother? Well, she has some sweet water, so everyone's happy. By the way, what about fish and inhabitants of water bodies? Well, everything's pretty strange here, too. When a young perch is born, their father guards the territory, circling around the fry and holding them together. And he also provides protection from potential predators. In short, he behaves like an exemplary parent. After a few days, most of the fish swim away, and at this moment, the male changes behavior. Instead of protecting the rest, he treats them like any other small prey and just devours them. You're either very fast or very dead. But okay, these are just perches. They can hardly be called intellectual. They're not like dolphins. Dolphins would never do such a thing. They would never do that, right? In 2013, researchers managed to witness the birth of a bottlenose dolphin baby. Bottlenose dolphins are the most common species of dolphin, but their birth in the wild hasn't been observed before. But before the scientists could believe their luck, they almost witnessed the infanticide. Two male dolphins tried to drown the baby about two minutes after its birth. Every time the dolphins lowered the newborn baby deeper, the mother raised it above the water so that the baby dolphin and could breathe. But a pair of males kept pushing the baby down for half an hour, and even when attempts to drown it stopped, the dolphins remained nearby. During the next two and a half hours, the males were on both sides of the mother and her newborn, showing verbal aggression. That is, the dolphins swore and threatened them. Such attacks are rare for dolphins. It seems that it was planned in advance, and it seems that the aggressive males were guided by the lion's logic. Scientists believe that males commit infanticide for mating. If a female dolphin has a calf to feed, she'll be unavailable for several years. But if she loses the baby soon after birth, she'll be ready to mate again in a few months. But well, what can I say?